Welcome to part 23 of our series, Secrets of Glessner House. Today, we are going to explore the use of portieres in the house, a practice rarely employed in modern decor, but commonly seen in well-to-do households of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Portier, based on the French word port, meaning door, is the term for a curtain hung on a doorway, as opposed to a window. The practice of using portieres goes back many centuries, such as this example, dating to the 15th century in France. Portieres were widely used in the Victorian era, as seen in this example from Clarence Cook's influential book on interior decoration, The House Beautiful. In addition to providing yet another opportunity for pattern and color, the use of portieres was practical as well as they helped to retain heat in a room and keep out drafts. This was an important consideration at a time when many people heated their homes with fireplaces or stoves. Francis Glessner first makes specific reference to a portier in a journal entry for June 1885, where she noted, quote, I got my portier. It was designed by Mr. Scott and prepared by the Decorative Arts Society. It is a large dragon on a changeable red silk ground." Unquote. There is no known photograph of the portier, but here we see Isaac Scott's original pencil sketch of the design. Francis Glessner's journal entry references the Chicago Society of Decorative Art, in which she was actively involved. The society trained women in various handicrafts as a means of achieving self-support, and art needlework was a specialty as seen in this exhibition notice from that same year. Frances Glessner was a talented needleworker herself, and later in 1885 noted that she had finished working on the portier, indicating it was a collaborative effort. We don't know where the portier was used, but it is likely that it was installed in the big house at the Glessner summer estate, The Rocks, in New Hampshire. In 1886, Isaac Scott carved and installed a pair of wood panels over the main hall fireplace, seen here, both of which feature dragons as their central design. Also note the use of a portier at far right, although it is not the portier in question. Here we see the carved panels, which were saved by Francis Glessner Lee when the big house was torn down. They were donated to Glessner House a few years ago, by the Society for the Protection of New Hampshire Forests. The panel at left features a dragon very similar to the one depicted in Scott's sketch for the portier. In 1885, the Glessners had their first meeting with Henry Hobson Richardson at his home in Brookline, Massachusetts. They were very impressed with his library, shown here, and later ordered several items they had seen in this room for their own home. Deep alcoves were located to either side of the fireplace in Richardson's library, and they were separated from the main room by heavy woolen portieres in the peacock and dragon pattern designed by William Morris in 1878. Richardson used other Morris fabrics in the room and was a strong advocate of his designs, having visited Morris in England during his 1882 trip to Europe. This is a sketch of the Glessner's main hall, prepared by Richardson's office. It shows the use of portieres over the doorways to either side of the hall fireplace, although they are drawn as a general reference only, with no specific pattern indicated. In April 1887, Frances Glessner noted in her journal that she had selected a Morris rug and hangings for the main hall. Not surprisingly, the hangings which were used as both portieres and draperies, were the same peacock and dragon design they had seen in Richardson's office. The pattern consists of alternating rows of peacocks and dragons. The scale was huge, with a vertical repeat of 42 inches, making the design especially bold. Linda Perry, in her book, William Morris Textiles, noted that the pattern represents Morris's best attempt at fulfilling his dream of recreating a medieval hanging. Here we see the restored main hall with the peacock and dragon portieres in place at the parlor doors 
and at the doorway at the far north end of the room. This broad doorway had two smaller doors leading into both the servants' hallway and the guest bathroom. So the portiere functioned here to provide privacy and to conceal these utilitarian functions. The Glessners also used portieres in their bedroom, as seen in this image from 1923. The doorway to the left of the fireplace led into Francis Glessner's dressing room, and a portiere is clearly visible. A companion doorway to the right of the fireplace led to John Glessner's dressing room, and was hung with a portiere as well. Here we see a detail of the block printed velvet used for the portieres. It was designed and made by Thomas Wardle, a frequent Morris collaborator who was knighted by Queen Victoria for his innovations in the silk industry. The same fabric was used on the chaise lounge in the bedroom. Several fragments have been preserved, which would allow for an accurate reproduction to be made. A future project calls for reupholstering the chaise and creating new portieres. The last room we will look at is the parlor. The windows and the west doorway, which leads to the dining room, were all hung in a woven silk fabric by Morris known as Kennet. Here we see the restored room with the recreated Kennet fabric in place. The back side of the portieres features a deep red velvet to match the draperies in the dining room. The east doors of the parlor to either side of the fireplace had the most distinctive portieres in the house. Francis Glessner selected silk portieres in the lotus pattern, attributed to Morris's daughter May, known for her skills at designing and executing embroideries. As was the case with the dragon portiere we discussed earlier, the ladies of the Chicago Society of Decorative Art did most of the silk embroidery, with Francis Glessner completing selected sections herself. May Morris would have seen the portieres in place when she visited the Glessner house in 1909. By 1918, the portieres were well worn, and they were donated to the Art Institute of Chicago, the first documented donation to the museum of a piece from Morris and Company. The one surviving panel has been extensively conserved and will go on public display for the first time in December 2021 as part of the new exhibition entitled Morris and Company, The Business of Beauty. We hope you have enjoyed learning more about the use of portieres and seeing the various pieces that Frances Glessner selected for her Prairie Avenue home. Tune in next time when another secret will be revealed.